<laughs> Good evening. Welcome to this special concert in honor of Puerto Rico. And uh, you just heard the fantastic, amazing son of Puerto Rico, Miguel Zenon. And an array of soloists, Ini Ogantola on the clarinet. Tony Terrassa on the alto saxophone. Larry Wang and Peter Godard on piano. Dylan Sleeper on tenor saxophone. Alan Osmondson on the trumpet. And Chase Vogeli on the drums. This is an original composition by Miguel entitled Ceremonial.
Alan Osmondson on the flugelhorn. Miguel Zenon, composer, saxophonist. Part of this journey that we're on, as you may know, um, this ensemble along with Miguel Zenon and my amazing colleague, Evan Zaporin, who I will properly introduce right now. Evan Zaporin, bass clarinet, and other clarinets. We were all slated to go to um, Puerto Rico this, this past January, and uh, that wasn't possible, but we are going January of 19. We're gonna be there. And part of this journey was, was an education for me, not only about the plight of the island, um, past and present, um, but also getting to know what's been going on in our, our MIT community in terms of uh, relief and support for Puerto Rico. So it's been a great pleasure to get to know the students of the MIT Association, Puerto Rican students here at MIT. So I want to introduce you to the president and the vice president. This is Gabriel Genorio and Nina Friticelli uh, Guzman. Please welcome them. Hope you're feeling nice and dry and warm in here. You know, it's a really cold night, but it's never a bad night to hear some good music. Hi, I'm Nina Fradicelli, and I am Vice President of the Association of Puerto Rican Students. And I'm Gabriel Genori, I'm President of the MIT Association of Puerto Rican Students. And we first want to thank all of the MIT Festival Jazz Ensemble, as well as Miguel Senon, for coming together and making this concert. We want to thank you all for sharing your music with us, as well as for choosing to have your music be a means of bringing support to the island, as well as, as, well as raising awareness to its current state. Last semester, once Hurricane Maria hit home, APR was hard at work to do our best to raise awareness and funds to help our island. And we began by joining forces with different universities across the nation and started a GoFundMe campaign that ended up raising around $250,000. That money was donated to United for Puerto Rico, an organization that helped bring aid at critical moments, as well as donated money to nonprofits on the island. We then proceeded to work on campus and started a donation drive that lasted three days. And during those three days, we were able to see MIT, the MIT community's generosity and support for us. We ended up raising around $6,000 that we donated to a nonprofit on the island and raised around four to six pallets worth of goods ranging from animal products to food, canned food and hygiene and personal products. Um, and after the initial aid phase, um, we now, or, or some of our students actually went back to Puerto Rico in, uh, in January to work on uh, houses in the rural part of Puerto Rico to rebuild the, the roofs. Um, there's another group of Puerto Rican students that went to do field work and research what the lay of the land was after the hurricane to come back and report to uh, the MIT community to figure out what we could do later on. There were students who worked in the government uh, to try to create uh, better digital systems for the governor of Puerto Rico to uh, be uh, faster to respond after natural disasters. And ongoing, there are various things that the MIT community, non-Puerto Ricans that are part of our community are doing, spring workshops and classes and thinking about research projects in the island. Um, and to that, we created this, or we helped create a conference called uh, the uh, MIT Conference on the Resilient Reconstruction of the Caribbean that happened last December. And we were lucky to bring the governor to actually speak to us and to talk about what the issues are in the island regarding electricity, housing infrastructure, and water supply. And people from all around the world and people from the MIT uh, community came together to propose solutions. And hopefully those will carry on forward with a formal MIT Puerto Rico and the Caribbean collaboration. Uh, that's still in the works and we hope to be able to announce uh, more developments to come. The moral of the story here is that you know, Puerto Rico may be small and in the middle of the ocean, but we're here to uh, support it as best we can with our talent. And uh, into the future of Puerto Rico, I say, you know, bring it on.
And again, we want to thank the ensemble as well as Miguel, and we want to thank you, the audience, for supporting. And with that, we want to welcome to stage the gentlemen that help made it possible for us to take all our goods to the island and for it to reach the people that needed it at the most critical moments. Please help us in welcoming Pastor Henry Monroy. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Henry Monroy, a uh, pastor at Hyssop Christian Church in Dorchester. Uh, from the beginning of this whole mission, uh, I was actually trying to connect myself with uh, a larger organization. Uh, some of you guys might know who he is, Kurt Schilling, because um, he was promoting uh, that he was going to uh, help Puerto Rico. And uh, we started connecting with him, um, but something happened between uh, the process of uh, sending things to Puerto Rico. Uh, nobody was sending nothing uh, because there was a miscommunication or something was happening within the island that nothing was moving. Uh, so we started raising uh, uh, first aids from everyone in our church. Uh, I was assuming that I was going to raise probably two pallets in probably raise $1,000 and ship it to Puerto Rico. Uh, within the 24 hours, our church was uh, half full of boxes of first aid items, uh, diapers, and, and anything that anyone needed at the time. Um, that's when I started realizing that it was a little bit more serious. And uh, the Boston Globe reached out to me. Uh, once that happened, I just knew that this was going to go big. Um, Little by little, uh, people started continuing to come uh, to our church, and um, we had uh, different uh, schools and organizations reaching out to us. And uh, within four to five days, uh, we we had we had to start canceling our services uh, because there were so many uh, cases of water, uh, first aid items in our facility that uh, we couldn't have no more service. Uh, that's when uh, we connected with MIT. And um, it happened through Facebook, and then we came and we, we met uh, the group of students uh, that were out, outside collecting all the items. And uh, we just connected, and I told them, hey, you know, whatever it is that you guys need, I'm here to help out, and um, let's just connect and make this happen. Uh, so shortly after that, um, yeah, that's the team right there. <laughs> Uh, we came, we pulled up to our truck, and we just started filling our, you know, all the stuff. Our church is very small, and uh, one of our friends, uh, he came to the church and said, hey, you got to be careful. The structure of the building might not hold all the stuff that you have. <laughs> yeah, we, that's when I called the Boston police, and I asked them if they could let us borrow their parking lot, because we had over 20 pallets of water. Um, people calling from New Hampshire, Maine, uh, all over Massachusetts, and... Uh, I just thought this was going to be two pallets. Um, <laughs> uh, surely once I uh, started connecting with people, uh, U-Hauls were pulling in front of the church, um, <laughs> just unloading all the stuff that they had. And we just said, the doors of the church is open, you know, bring it on. Um, and surely it was, it was a lot of stuff that we had. Um, but right here we had um, Boston Mother's Care, UMass Lowell, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and all this thing, ha all this happened within hours of just telling people to help us, uh, and just people showed up. It wasn't just a Puerto Rico thing. It wasn't just Puerto Ricans that were coming out. Everyone was coming out. Everyone united. Everyone was helping us financially. Everyone was helping us with donations. And this is how um, things get done when people unite as one for the same cause, and it's to help humanity out. You know, sometimes we need help from someone else. That's why it's important to connect with other people. Uh, this is one of the gentlemen. We're filling up the truck. Uh, on Saturday, October 7th, I get a phone call at 3 in the morning. So I was a little bit concerned because there's nothing moving. Uh, they're not accepting nothing in the island, and the boats, all the shipping companies are on hold. 
At three in the morning, I get a phone call from a gentleman called uh, Roger Cruz. He's Cuban. Um, and he tells me, uh, Henry, I'm sorry that I'm calling you at three in the morning, but I have a, an opportunity that opened up and it's a, tw uh, a overnight shipping, uh, f a flight. And I said, how, how is this gonna happen? And he said, we have to drive from Boston to Orlando, Florida right now. <laughs> and I said, how are we gonna do that? I have like over 20 pallets of water. I have like 20 pallets of diapers, 20 pallets of formula, you know, 20 pallets of food. And he said, I'm going to rent a U-Haul in the morning and whatever fits in that U-Haul, we're taking it to Orlando. And I said, all right, let's cancel our Sunday service. And sure enough, uh, people started coming out within half an hour of a, of, a, of a, you know, letting people know, hey, we need help. And half an hour, we had a, group, a large group of people just helping us out. Uh, and within the next 24 hours, Roger Cruz and his girlfriend, uh, Mari Gloria, they drove to Orlando, Florida, and made it to FedEx. Uh, the FAA opened up a door of 50 tons, um, a, ship, uh, a, f a flight that would take 24 hours basically to, for it to get to Puerto Rico. So the next day, I'm getting the ticket to go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> and I didn't know that I was gonna go to Puerto Rico that next following day. Uh, once I get to Puerto Rico, that's me in Carolina, Puerto Rico, uh, <laughs> with all our stuff within 24 hours. And the best thing about this was that it was completely free. Uh, we didn't pay a dollar. And at the end of the whole thing, we sent 27 pallets without paying a dime. Um, and thanks to the FAA that allowed, that, allowed us to uh, send all these things over. This is a part of the group uh, that went to the south side of Puerto Rico. Uh, they took uh, 12 pallets of first aid items to help them out. Uh, this is pallets of uh, baby formula and, and uh, diapers and stuff like that that we uh, that we had sent down there to Puerto Rico. So this is the Bank Oriental that's in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, I connected with a gentleman called Rauli Santos, and uh, within three days we asked Oriental, uh, the bank, to give us a space, and they said take the whole first floor um, and just put all the stuff there and get organized. So that's exactly what we did. We just started getting organized and. Uh, preparing packages for family. Uh, we had over 300 packages of family uh, to help them for the next four or five days. This is the group that Raul Santo uh, connected us with in Puerto Rico. Uh, the company um, that they were working for uh, told them that they can work uh, six, uh, four hours of community service and four hours of just regular work. So we just took advantage of the time and uh, we just started unloading and, and packing up all this stuff. And uh, this is us getting prepared to go to the western side of Puerto Rico. A good team. Uh, and before we left, we prayed and uh, asked God for, our, uh, for guidance uh, for this mission. Once we arrived to the western side of Puerto Rico, so I just want to pause. Mind you, I didn't plan none of this. Um, <laughs> I'm just in it for the ride. So <laughs> uh, everything, it was, it was like a puzzle and everything felt like it went, everything just fell into play. And it was just amazing. Uh, these two gentlemen are veterans. Uh, they came from Texas. Uh, they're not getting paid for this. They're doing this absolutely volunteer. Uh, and they're just protecting us from anyone that tried to, uh, you know, step out of their line, I would say. <laughs> Uh, in the western side of Puerto Rico, there was no water. Like, legitimately, there's, there's no water at all. And we found this, uh, uh, we found this lady with her newborn baby. Uh, the baby was born exactly the same day the storm hit, and she had no formula, and there was no water. Uh, without water, you can't mix up the formula. So we made sure that she had um, enough food and uh, items for the baby for the next week. Uh, this gentleman, we found him in, um, in Mayagüez, Puerto Rico. Um, before the storm, he had, he, he, he had diabetes and his legs were uh, amputated. And um, he rode the storm basically in his house. The water was six feet high and um, his son was scraping mud off the walls while we was attending him uh, with veterans from, the, from Texas.
that also joined us with uh, that also joined us to help them out. This gentleman, we we also met him in Mayagüez, and he was cleaning out his car uh, because all the river came out, and um, he was trying to clean out his car to make sure that it worked. But there's no, he wouldn't be able to move his car due to the flood. Uh, the lady that we helped out as well with formula and, and water uh, for the babies. I guess that was the number one thing for us uh, to make sure that these babies were uh, drinking clean water and food. In the south side of Puerto Rico, uh, our group uh, met with uh, uh, this lady. Uh, she started crying um, because nobody uh, has helped her out since the storm hit. And um, this was one of the pictures that motive, you know, uh, pushed me and uh, made me realize that we was doing a great job. She was crying because she hasn't drunk water in over 14 days. And um, we, we, we attended her, we helped the whole community from the south side. And at the end of the day, she hugged everyone from the team and was very happy and excited uh, that we went there. So while, while this is all happening, uh, I just want to inform that uh, in San Juan, uh, most of the people in San Juan, well, they were, pretty, they were all right in a sense that uh, there was some wet water, but it was very limited. And we had to drive uh, two hours uh, and 45 minutes uh, to help those people that didn't have uh, that, that help. Uh, this is the military people uh, from Texas that was helping us out. Uh, great guys. Uh, they helped us out. <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, the sign says, Puerto Rico se levanta sin, se levanta sin luz, se levanta sin agua, sin comunicación. So basically what it's saying is, Puerto Rico will rise without light, without water, or without communication. Um, that was a very powerful statement, because at the time, there was in a base where the military, the United States military was uh, taking out water and purifying the water just for people to be able to take a shower and wash uh, their clothes and, and dishes and stuff like that. So this was a military, this is a military uh, a spot as well. This was in the, this was in the, what you see right here in the side where the two military guys are, are, are freezers. Uh, the death toll of Puerto Rico, there was over a thousand people that died in Puerto Rico, so the, the, the building itself couldn't hold all the bodies uh, inside, so the military had to come out and place uh, freezers outside uh, for the bodies. So all these images uh, that I try to present here is just to show uh, that it wasn't just something that just came in just knocked out water and light. People actually, heard their lives were really affected and a lot of people uh, lost their lives in this uh, tragic event. So as I'm, so I went to Puerto Rico, uh, one way trip, and when our mission finished, I said, let me go back to Boston. I called JetBlue and they told me there's no more flights. So I started reaching out to every other airline and they're telling me there's no more flights till November. So now I'm stuck in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'm stuck in Puerto Rico now and I have nothing to do because we just finished giving everything out. And I get a phone call uh, from someone on Facebook stating that there's a doctor that's coming from uh, California. At the time when the storm happened, there was a wildfire that was happening in California. And um, Dr. Lamaris and uh, Leslie uh, reached out to us and they said, we have two plane tickets to go to Puerto Rico. We need your help. I don't know who they are. I said, sure, come on. <laughs> and they came uh, loaded with medication, um, things to help people out on um, their diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, all this medication they came with and we just started helping people out. We started going to supermarkets in San Juan and just getting uh, gallons of water to take it to the western side of Puerto Rico to help more people out. And that's us just going door by door, reaching out to those that can't uh, move, they can't uh, go to the hospital or the clinics um, within the island. That's me and uh, Luisa Puerto Rico with the kids. <laughs> um, 
There's a lady in Loisa, Puerto Rico as well. She lost her whole house, and yet she's still living within the house. Um, there's no electricity, there's no water, and her structure is clearly um, of the house was not livable. Uh, this picture uh, it was very Im impacting to me because all you see is devastation all over, but then you see a little you see a little kid uh, swinging or in a playground. Um, that's that for me right there represents Puerto Rico. In the midst of a disaster, how can you still focus and have fun? Um, and that's what this little boy was doing. And that's why I had to snap this picture because it was so impacting that I had to make sure that I take an image. These are some of the doctors as well that basically helped us out to reach the certain pueblos and make sure that everybody was attended uh, with uh, medication and so forth. That's a group that's went also to the western side of Puerto Rico with uh, food and items to help out others. And that's another group that we met in Puerto Rico. And we went to the south side of Puerto Rico on this occasion to help out a school that their whole structure was uh, gone in this. So, and we went to Puerto Rico in September, uh, in October, I apologize, we came back in December, and we left in November, I apologize, and then went back in December again to help out Puerto Rico. We ended up sending to Puerto Rico three containers filled with first aid items, and it helped out a lot of people. Um, a few thousand people were helped through the help of everyone here in Boston, everyone in the state of Massachusetts, and all this could not be done if we did not unite. And I'm thankful for you guys, and I'm thankful for this opportunity that you guys have given me. Um, if this was to happen, I told this to the, to the professor, I feel like I'm in debt with a lot of people um, because everybody helped my people out when, when they needed it. So thank you so much, guys, for this opportunity, um, and I appreciate all you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Henry, for all you've done and all you continue to do.
La Maga, a composition by Miguel Zinon, Alan Osmond on the flugelhorn, Evan Zipporin, the bass clarinet, Evan Zipporin, Dylan Sleeper, bass flute, bass flute, and Miguel Zinon. We're going to do the next two pieces as a little set, Caravan, and then after that, you will hear that surprise. This is an arrangement by Peter Godart on Juan Teasel's Caravan.
Miguel Zanon, Evan Ziporin. Before that, Caravan, Peter Godart, Tony Tarasa, Ini Ogantola. It's been such an honor to present this concert. Um, I just have a few people to thank uh, before we go into the next last two pieces. Um, first and foremost, the students of the MIT Festival Jazz Ensemble. Thank you so, so much. I've known, heard Miguel play live for the last 13 years, I guess now, and uh, since 2013, we've been collaborating regularly, and it's been one of the greatest joys of my life. This is an amazing musician in person, and uh, we're so thankful to have him here. <clears throat> the MIT Events Office, Cuco D'Aglio on sound, Tony DeBartolo back there recording, the people of Puerto Rico, my goodness, you have inspired me, and I, you will continue ins to inspire me. Thank you very much. <laughs> For this next piece by Miguel o Oyelo, um, we're going to bring three special guests, all uh, close, close friends and collaborators of Miguel's. Um, please welcome to the stage David Rivera, Miguel Martinez, and Jorge Arce. Getting said, I just want to, I don't know if I did or not, but I want to acknowledge again Evan, uh, who is the chair of our department, Evan Zaporin, and also the head of CAST, the Center of Arts and Science and Technology, and a world-class player. <laughs> and to have the, this the person as a colleague uh, year after year, I think we collaborate constantly because we can not not do that. So it's been fantastic. So thank you, Evan. <laughs>
Ben Hart on tenor saxophone, Dylan Sleeper on tenor saxophone, Kevin Costello on the trombone. And our three percussionists, David, Miguel, Jorge. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Fred and the band. Uh, it's really just a, a privilege always to collaborate with Fred and everyone here at MIT um, and this amazing group of musicians. They've been working hard on this music uh, for the past couple months, and it's just really inspiring to be here and get to uh, finally have it played and, and have you all here to share this, this moment with us. It's really meaningful, so thank you so much for being here and supporting the cause. Um, I, I really have to um, acknowledge uh, Fred's uh, work through all of this. He's really been the, uh, the brains behind this whole operation. Um, uh, he uh, reached out to me, I want to say maybe a couple years ago, about uh, bringing this band down to the island and, and doing uh, various activities there, from concerts to educational activities, cultural exchanges, et cetera. And we've been planning this trip for a while. Uh, obviously, it had to be postponed for obvious reasons, but uh, Fred was the one who was really pushing hard about having this concert tonight. We're gonna have the same concert in New York tomorrow. Um, really, uh, more than anything else, we're just trying to create awareness about the situation that's still going on in Puerto Rico. I mean, you saw all that footage from earlier. It was very, very powerful footage, you know. Uh, but it's really sad to say that that's still going on in certain parts of Puerto Rico. There's, there's folks without water, without electricity, without very, 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 very basic everyday needs. And they really need all the help they get. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. A lot of stuff going on in this country, in our country, in Puerto Rico also. So it's easy, you know, for this to be all news uh, because it happened five months ago, six months ago. But uh, you should know that it's, that it's, still, it's still going on. There's still a lot of need there. Uh, there's still a lot, of, a lot of chaos, unfortunately, going on in the island. So uh, we're just trying to really create awareness for folks like yourselves and everyone out there who's listening that, uh, you know, any, anything you can do to help uh, is, is greatly needed and greatly, I'm, I'm sure is greatly appreciated by the folks down there. This last piece we're going to play is a piece I wrote specifically for tonight. It's the first time we've ever played it in public. Uh, we've been rehearsing it for the last couple of days. And uh, I wrote this piece thinking about um, well, various things, you know, um, one, of the, one of the main things that's happened, it was also already happening before the, the, the disaster, but uh, especially after the hurricanes hit, a lot of Puerto Ricans just started leaving the island for obvious reasons. Some of them, you know, didn't have a home, they needed medical help, um, you know, they needed a job. Uh, so they started migrating to the United States and elsewhere. Um, but a lot of people did stay, you know, in the island and they kind of, you know, they kind of grinded through it uh, and they're still grinding through it. I have a lot of friends from artists to uh, you know, most small business owners who decided to stay there and do what they could to uh, build that country back up. Uh, so I wrote this piece for them, thinking about them and thinking about the resiliency and the courage of a lot of these people in Puerto Rico, a lot of the people who are trying to help out the situation there. And this one is called En Pie de Lucha. It's gonna close out the concert. So thank you very much. Thank you for your attention.
Miguel Donan, Peter Goda, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, MIT Festival Jazz Ensemble.